Lovely. So thank you for coming to, to say hello. And I've got some, some nice gifts and, and oh, things. Nice. So yeah, it's been, it's been very lovely. Yes. Well, I have to say, I feel like Doctor Who fans are some of the most loyal in the world. Oh, Would you agree? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, when I, uh, when I did Doctor Who, you know, I didn't realize this was even a, even a thing. You know, you, you do a job as an actor and you, sure. you, you get on with it and you move on to the next thing and, and you kind of think you're going to leave that behind forever. Uh, so it's really nice to, to carry it on and keep talking about it. And it seems, you know, it's amazing to see really young people as well uh, who are getting into it now and kind of it means so much to people of all generations so yeah it's, it's a, it's a, it feels like a real privilege it really spans generations and we see that with even when people are asking questions it's like sure. you know I grew up watching it or yeah. my mom showed it to me what were your first kind of earliest memories of Doctor Who maybe as a child or did your well, family it watch it it wasn't really on when I was a kid I remember seeing a few Sylvester McCoy episodes um, and Sophie Aldred and you know I, I, I was fascinated to buy it, but it was then it wasn't really on. But it, it's so funny over here, isn't it? Because it's just in the language and in in the culture so much that people refer to it so much. Um, I, someone gave me like a long Doctor Who scarf as well when I was like when I was a teenager, and I wore that I, I wore that for about three years around Ooh. like I was doing cosplay for for. for for several years, so yeah, I feel like it was kind of in my in my bones somewhere. Maybe, maybe you manifested it. Maybe with that I scarf. did manifest yes. it. Yeah. Round of applause for Amelia, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Amelia. Sorry, I ordered a coffee. <laughs> thank you, Amelia. <laughs> Hardworking people here at Comic Con. Well, I have to say, I have interviewed Mr. McCoy and sure. and Mr. Baker and so many. Jodie Whittaker as well was wow. here recently. Wonderful. And every single person from Doctor Who, it's one of those casts that every single person is not only really lovely to the fans, but a great interview, and they just have this charm about them. Sure. Would you agree that you know, the, the people that have worked on Doctor Who are just sort of in a league of their own? Well, I think, you know, I, 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 and I, it's funny, when we were doing Broadchurch, um, obviously a lot of Doctor Who people were, were in that. Yeah. Uh, and so it feels like a, a bit of a family, but when Chris Chibnall kind of asked me to do Broadchurch, he was like, look, there are going to be a lot of Doctor Who people in it because I love working with them and we're having like a, we're having a, a, a no horrible people policy, like everyone's going to be lovely. And I think that really shines through in, the, in Doctor Who as well. They, you know, you get cast for things because you're, you know, right for the part and good, first of all. But I think it, it also is a family that you're going into. And I think they're very aware of that when they're when they're when they're getting people in to, to do it it's a great group of people for sure before we get to the fans i have a question obviously you know we have stars from stage and screen here at comic con from different genres tv film and the theater sure <laughs> why do i keep doing the accent <laughs> no with i you? like it i don't it. know it's what good. it is it suits you. <laughs> i'm trying well you know when it comes to theater and musicals that's yeah. kind of a different vibe what is the difference to you and, and sort of what do you prefer most? Is it film, TV? Well, it's, it's very strange. Right? Like when I was growing up in Birmingham, I just wanted to be on stage. Like it was my thing. Not even really in musicals, in, in plays. And I was in a band separately. So I was kind of singing and doing that very separately to, to theatre stuff. Uh, and I just wanted to be, a, you know, the RSC or at the National or, you know, doing, doing plays. And I never really thought about doing TV and film. Uh, I never really thought about doing musicals either, so a lot of my career has been quite a surprise, and now I've really fallen in love with both doing you know, TV and film and doing, doing musical theatre as well. Um, and, you know, I am very humbled every time I get a job, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things when someone asks you to do something, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for it, so, yeah. We're so grateful that you're here, and I could fangirl as much as I would like to up sure. here, but that's not what we're about here at Monopoly. We are by the fans, for the fans, and as there are so many of you, don't make me pay for that, Phil, please. Put it on my tab. <laughs> uh, we have some lovely people that would love to ask questions, but I'm going to start with the lovely Iona right over here on the left. Round of applause for Iona, our first hey, question Iona. of the panel. Hi. 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 Um... I'm just wondering, what is your favorite thing about being an actor? My favorite thing about being an actor? Wow, that's actually a very complicated question to answer. I think I've always done it, and I, I don't know if I was just a very attention-seeking child. Um, but, 
when I started doing it when I was very young, and my mum's an actor uh, and a puppeteer, and my dad's a musician, so I've kind of followed in the family um, trade, as it were. But I do just love it, and I, I suppose the best thing about it is working with lots of different amazing people. You know, every job you get, you kind of, you, you, you form a family, whether it's for a few days or a few months or a few years. And I've been very lucky that I've got to work with so many amazing people that I really look up to. And, uh, and that's the best part of it for me. And getting to travel and, you know, I love seeing the world. I love eating food in different parts of the world. Um, so, uh, yeah, in fact, I did a job in uh, Kiev in uh, Ukraine about six years ago. And I, uh, I made a list of all the best chicken Kievs in Kiev. Uh, and that was, uh, that's my way of experiencing a, 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 a city. So, uh, yeah. But, yeah, the travel and the people. And, you know, when a script is really good, there's, there's nothing better than working on something and, and, and really delving into it and, and putting your all into it. So, yeah, I feel very lucky to be able to do what I do. Great question, Iona. Thank you so Thank much. You. Quick question for me. We love to hear about the travels that you take because yeah. sometimes, you know, you are working on a project and you don't get to see anything. Yeah. But in your travels, you mentioned being a foodie. Yeah. What is your number one tastiest thing you've had in your travels? Uh, I went, I was, work, I was working in China over in uh, December and then we went over to Tokyo and basically everything I ate in Japan was amazing from the ramen to the tasty buns to all the street food like i'm a huge japanese food fan would huge Jap fan of japan so, yeah. so it's better than wagamama oh uh, well you know wagamama's all right we can okay. we, let's not poo poo wagamama but uh yeah some of that japanese ramen man they have egg they have hard boiled eggs just in a basket that you can take and eat and uh, it was uh, yeah it was amazing really really Love amazing that. we've got our first question here from this lovely patient lady in the front Hi, um, Hi, I'm Ella. Um, I'm a bit of an actor myself, and at the minute um, I'm in like the works of a production of Treasure Island. So, oh, right. Uh, you're kind of like a cast icon because um, of like Long John Silver. Yeah. But, um, my question is, if Rory could travel with any other doctor, would he? Who would he travel with, or would he stick with Matt Smith? Well, I don't think Rory particularly wanted to travel with the doctor anyway, so I don't think he'd pick <laughs> any other doctor to travel with I think he'd be like no I'm fine I'd rather stay where I am where it's safe uh, I think that was kind of his job um, in the team so yeah, yeah he'd either stick with Matt's doctor if I suppose he'd go wherever Amy goes yeah. really uh, it, it's it's slightly dependent on on her but yeah he's uh, he's not he's not really into it even by the end he was still just trying to get everyone out of everything so yeah, yeah. And then my other question is, do you have any tips for anyone who's just starting out in the industry like myself or others? Yeah, just keep doing it. Just keep meeting people. And, you know, I went to an amazing youth theatre in Birmingham called Stage 2, um, which uh, was such an, an amazing education. I met lots of other people who wanted to act and people who didn't want to act but people who were interested in it and that's where I kind of formed all my closest friendships and I think it gave me the experience without thinking of it as a, jo a possible job or, or a career or anything like that and just keep doing it because you love doing it and find other people to, to do it with and, and yeah, that's, that's all, I can, all I can say. Thank you and thank Team you, Rory. Though. Team Rory, yes, Team thank Rory. you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Best of luck to you. We love to hear yeah, about aspiring best actors. Of Quick question for me. You're mentioning Birmingham. I will not say Birmingham, I promise. You can say Birmingham. Birmingham. Trying. Birmingham. Uh, what, when you are traveling and you're away for long periods, what do you miss about Birmingham? Well, from so I'm, well I moved to London when I was... It, I'm old now, so I moved to London 21 years ago uh, when I was 21. And um, I was desperate to leave Birmingham and for various, you know, I've, my parents are still there, I love them very dearly, they're wonderful, and I was just like, no, get me out of Birmingham, I've got to get to London. And now, I absolutely love Birmingham again. Like, I go back a lot and, and spend a lot of time there, because uh, I don't know, it just feels, London's home, but Birmingham is also like proper, proper home. But when I'm away, like obviously I've got a dog and a cat, and I miss them dearly when I'm, when I'm away. Uh, yeah, I don't miss the tube. 
I get around everywhere by bike. I can't deal with public transport. I find it uh, horrible. So, yeah, I miss just being able to, like, cycle around and, and you know, be at home. But, yeah. It's funny how that works, right? You want to get away from home, then you grow up, and you're like, oh. Yeah, I know. You go, actually, it was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. life was good. Yeah. we got a question right here. Hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Amelia. Um, what was your favorite Doctor Who episode to film? I don't know. Like, I, I don't really know what my favorite episode was to film. I was talking to Pearl about this yesterday. We were like, we get asked what our favorites are a lot, and I don't know. It was such a kind of huge experience and such a varied experience that I, I don't know if this kind of a, a, a one one episode or one moment that was kind of my favorite in terms of the writing. I really loved the Pandorica and the Big Bang, like being able to play the Roman version of Rory and I just think the, that, whole, that whole story art was so beautiful and I was really pleased with the stuff that I got to, I got to explore in that. So, and also it felt like we were making a kind of 80s Spielberg movie, like it felt like, it felt like on, a, on quite a grand scale and Toby who directed it is just brilliant. So. Uh, yeah, we had a lot, I had a lot of fun doing that, but like my most fond memories are probably when we were just kind of hanging out either in Cardiff or traveling around and, you know, we got to go to New York and do the launch of the series, which was, and it was my first time in, in New York, which is a city I've, I really love. Um, so I think that was probably the best experience that we, we all had in it, but yeah, it was, uh, it was all really good. Even the bits where we were freezing cold in various castles in South Wales, you know, it was, it was, it was brilliant. It was really, a really great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello. Hello. Um, will you ever, like, properly release music on Spotify or something? Um, will I ever properly release music on Spotify? Well, yes. So I get what happens with me. I think it's because I've recently been diagnosed with ADHD is that I do something up until the point where it's nearly finished and then I go right I'm doing something else and then I leave all those things to fester for years so I've got lots of music recorded and lots of stuff that I'm doing but I am I am working on I say this every time I am actually working on an album at the moment but I write a lot for theatre and for other things as well so I've got about five or six different music projects that I'm writing at the moment um, so yeah hope, hopefully I, I will I will release something at some point but when I can I need someone else to push me towards doing it and give me a deadline otherwise it just goes on and on and on and I get distracted and go and do other things so yeah um, also will you ever come back to doing like Doctor Who or the Big Finish CDs well, we've been doing this Rory Centurion Big Finish series, which I really love doing, especially during, when we were doing it during lockdown. Uh, I just did it in my house. Uh, and my wife was in it as well, so we got to do some of that together, which was brilliant. Um, and I really love doing those stories. And the plan is to... I've said to them, I'll just keep doing them forever because I really love it. But um, it's all about the people coming together and... Uh, having the time to work on it so yes we are going to do some more of that and uh yeah i look forward to to doing those i think they're brilliant thank you thank, thank you. you i'm so glad you brought up his music any musical influences that you could wrap off to us Pre past or present oh who's well, influenced I'm, you? I'm constantly trying to find new music to listen to and you know i go and see a lot of it's what i spend most of my time doing is you know going to see bands or or, or finding new music I mean, I grew up, my dad's a musician, so I grew up with a lot of his influences, and he played in Fine Young Cannibals and uh, the Ruby Turner Band and kind of played with UB40 and various people in Birmingham. So I grew up with a lot of that music. And then I really got into my, like, jangly indie music uh, when I was in my, in my teens. And it was always the aim to find the stuff that no one else had ever listened to. So lots of my influences are like seafood and cable and other bands that people have never heard of. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> which is good. But I'm a huge Radiohead fan. Um, so I listen to them, uh, at them a lot. And then there's this band Pompoko. If you get a chance to listen to Pompoko, they're a really brilliant band. I saw them a few months ago. They're really, really great. Yeah. That. This is my friend Xander. Hi, Xander. Hello. Hi. 
Nice to meet you, Mr. Pond. Yes, nice to see you too. Uh, so my question is, the great thing about the series and the Doctor is that he's been known to change his face into people that inspire him and he admires. If the Doctor was to take Rory Pond's face yes. and you were to become the Doctor, yes. how would you play it differently than anyone else who's ever played the part? Well, I don't know. I think what's so brilliant about that character of the Doctor is that whoever plays them gets to bring their own flavor to it. Um, and it's, it's, it's brilliant, so especially with kind of recently with, you know, with Matt doing it and Jodie, and you know, who I, I, know, I know, I knew before they got the, the part and to see them do it and put bits of themselves in was always really, really brilliant and really fun. So I don't know. I think, I mean, I suppose it'd be quite funny. I mean, I suppose he'd just be very nervous, which I think would be quite a departure for the, for the doctor. But um, I don't know. I'd just bring, br bring elements of, of Rory into it. But uh, I think it might be, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not going to happen. But if it ever did, it would be, uh, it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you. adding to the legacy. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, Best t-shirt of the weekend, thank yes, thank you. So you. Yeah, good, yeah. Um, I'm in drama school myself at the moment, and I'm really interested... You're at drama school? Yeah. Oh, where are you at? Uh, LMA in Liverpool. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, um, I was wondering, you know, in A Good Man Goes to War, how do you think the, the events of that episode affected your portrayal of Rory and how the character developed from that point? Um, well, I think it made him realized he had to kind of take responsibility and uh, and I mean it was such a huge thing to happen I think that episode you're right fundamentally changed him as a character and I think he realized the seriousness of everything you know I mean after everything he'd been through but to kind of be a father and to to have had that experience I think he I think the 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 quest to have a more normal life became much more um, serious and, and the threat that they faced was so huge that I think it made him just take it all a bit more seriously and also realise that he could step up and, and, and be that person to take responsibility and he felt like he kind of proved himself with Amy a bit more as well. So yeah, I think it was a big, big kind of growing up event for him. So, yeah. Thank you so much. For thank, you. Best character. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hello, don't you look fabulous? We're going to come adjust the mic for you. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Olivia. I'm Hi, Olivia. Um, I'm a huge fan, by the way. Thank you. Um, if you could ever like make your own show that's like Doctor Who, how would you do it? Ooh. Would you invite the same people or would you make it a little different? I don't know. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? Lots of shows try to be like Doctor Who, but nothing, could, nothing quite comes, comes close. I don't know. I mean, yeah, if I was to have my own show that I wrote, I would definitely invite, you know, Karen and Matt and Alex and some of the other brilliant people we work with on Doctor Who to be in it, because I think, as well as being really good friends, I think they're some of the best actors I've ever worked with. So, yeah, I would definitely, I would, that's a really great idea. I'm gonna start thinking about that and what show we can all do together. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I like this, every, the, the mic has to go down every, uh, every Hello. time. Hello. Lovely kimono, that's great. I met great. you yesterday when we were doing the autograph. Yes, we did. Um, if you could go back to Doctor Who, would you do it? And what character would you think you would be? Well, if I could go back to it now? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny this. Because, it, because people have gone back, everyone says, when are you going back? <laughs> um, quite a lot. And it, it's funny, up until a few years ago, you know, myself and Karen would always say, oh, no, no, we'd never go back. It was perfect. It was perfect. We'd never want to touch it. It was perfect. Um, but I think as we've kind of got a bit older, and because we've, we've all done lots of other work that we're proud of, and, you know, it was a long time ago, you know, we've, we've kind of defined ourselves in other, in other ways. I think to go back as the characters that we played at some point would be really, really fun. I want to go back for, like, the 80th... Uh, 
celebration or kind of when we're, when we're much older and meet them, meet them later on. But yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to go back at some point. But if I, ha if I could go into it now, just as another character, I'd want to be like the scariest monster that Doctor Who's ever seen. Um, you know, a monster that's always standing behind you, but you can never turn around, you know, one of those. Well, yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You got it, you got You've it. You've got it. You've got it. No pressure. If you got an opportunity to be in a th uh, spin off of Doctor Who where Rory, after Rory and Amy got that back in time yeah. by a weeping angel, would you take that opportunity? Yeah, probably would take the opportunity. It sounds like you've got it planned out, though. Do you want to write it? You should start writing it now. <laughs> and maybe, maybe we sh we'll all make it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've got a lot of questions. Okay, how many questions? Uh, I don't know, just a lot. We've got loads of time. It's fine. Take your time. What's your favourite doctor? Matt. Okay. I have to say Matt. He's quick too. Yeah, Matt. it's it, it, you know, he's good, isn't he? What's your favourite doctor? Um, I don't know, I like them all. Oh, that's good. Good answer. Yay. What's the most difficult thing as an actor? Um, do you want the the really serious answer. <laughs> um, the... Whatever. Okay. The most difficult thing as an actor is, well, obviously learning lines is hard, but that's kind of fine. I think just kind of confidence. Like, it's, it's, it's tricky. You're constantly, uh, you know, especially when, or when I was younger, you're very much dependent on other people saying you're good and giving you a job. And that can be really, really hard and you have to you have to kind of be able to deal with rejection and not getting the jobs that you want to get uh and uh when you do get a job you go on to the set and you're working with brilliant brilliant people and you go i don't think i can do this this is horrible so a lot of it is is about kind of confidence and anxiety managing really um i think that's the that's the hardest bit but it's also a lot of fun and when you can kind of get through that and work out how to relax and believe in yourself, then it's the, I've, it's the best job ever. What's the most difficult episode you filmed? Um, well, a lot of the episodes we filmed in the cold in winter in Cardiff were difficult because they were very cold. Um, yeah, I'd say, that, I'd say those ones. Yeah. In the last episode of the Eleventh Doctor, Amy appeared. Why didn't you? Which one? Uh, the last episode of the Eleventh Doctor. Just. Oh yeah. I don't know. Maybe Rory was busy. I don't think he particularly wants to go and see the Doctor again. I think he's kind of fine doing his thing. Will you ever appear again in Doctor Who? Who knows. Who knows? Doctor Who knows. Those See? were good questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, round of applause. Our next host of Comic-Con right there, I think. For sure. Absolutely, quick fire. Hey there. Hiya. Hiya. I'm Hala. Uh, I have two questions. First, what was your favorite monster you got to go up against? Well, I, for, for various reasons, I really liked the silence. I liked it because it was a new monster and I liked the concept of it. The idea of it was really creepy. But also Marnix, who played the silence, was the most fun guy on set ever. So he had this obviously terrifying character and terrifying um, costume. And then he'd take it off and just be really jolly. And I liked the juxtaposition of that. I thought it was really funny. Um, so yeah, but I mean, the Weeping Angels were, were terrifying as well. They were really, really quite scary. And what they do as well was that some of them were real statues that were just statues, most of them. And then others of them were people in costumes standing very still. And you were never quite sure if you were standing next to a person or a statue until they moved. So it was very, very unnerving. Uh, to be on set with them. And is there uh, any monster you wish you could have gone up against? Well, no, I mean, when I got the job, I was like, yes, I can't wait to work with Daleks every 
day and I went and bought like an old Daleks manual and, and read up on them and then I didn't get to work with them for ages. So when I did get, especially all the stuff I got to do on my own with them, uh, I was very, very pleased. So yeah, that kind of ticked, ticked that box for me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Katie. Hi. Hi. I'm actually going to go for a non-Doctor Who question. Great. So I recently listened to the Good Omens audiobook. Oh, sure. And I was just wondering how you got involved on a project like that, because you were one of the voice actors. Yeah, I was. I don't know how I got involved in that. Someone asked me to do it. But um, it was really fun. And again, it was one of those things during, uh, during lockdown uh, where I got to record it in my house. It was very weird because we actually recorded it all separately. So we didn't hear... It was a very weird... I found it very difficult, actually, because we couldn't hear the other people that we were reading with. We just read our lines and hoped that they make, made sense. And I was really angry about it at first. I was like, I, no, acting is just listening and responding. And at the moment, I'm just making it up and it doesn't make any sense. So I found it very difficult. So I've not, <laughs> not listened to it. But the, for the people who have listened to it, they've said that it, it works really well. So, it was uh, very good. Yeah, oh, good. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank that's you. That's funny. That's kind of like going off of what you were always taught as an actor is that. Yeah. And they're trying to get you to do the opposite. Well, it's what it is. And so <laughs> I was reading these lines just going, I feel like I'm just doing a voiceover. Like it doesn't make any sense. And I think like a lot of the time, you know, for speed or whatever, they want act or if people can't be in the same room, they kind of want actors to kind of do their stuff uh, on their own or, you know, shoot stuff separately. And it's just, it, 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 uh, for me, it, it's not what the whole thing is about. I find it very, very difficult. You know, you're just responding to people. So, right. yeah. Hello. Hey. Um Hi. Do you still get stage fright when you perform like in front of a crowd? Do I still get stage fright? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a funny old thing, stage fright, and it comes in different guises. So obviously, early on in sort of when you're doing theatre, like early on in a run, if you haven't rehearsed enough or, or it's been a very quick process, you get out on stage for the first few times, you don't know how it's going to go that stuff can be very nerve-wracking, but also the nerves can be very useful. But I really found... So I did, um, I did Oklahoma, the musical, last year in the West End. And I'd done it, like... From, I'd done it for a, a few months at the Young Vic, and then we transferred it to the West End. So I'd done it, like, a hundred and whatever times. And then one night, in the middle of a song, I just blanked on what the next words were. And you can't just make, I couldn't just make it up. The music was just going and going and going. And I just went, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. And had a vision of myself just walking on stage, off stage, getting on my bike and going straight home, still dressed as a cowboy. Uh, and it was horrible. And then, but I, you know, I didn't do that and I got through it. But then at the same moment in the show, for about two weeks, it came up to that bit and I just started sweating and panicking and it was horrible and uh, but then you kind of get through it and it's an amazing it, it, you feel amazing when you can get through something you know like that and no one knows because what's going on in your head but yeah it happens all the time um, it's 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 part of the job but it's kind of okay and I love the fact that especially in live theater anything can anything can happen and, and actually those bits where things do go wrong are often really interesting where people have to cover for it or, or you realize that you're in a team of people who all are looking out for each other and, and, and it's, it's kind of an amazing thing when it, when it happens. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. What's up, boss? <clears throat> I, 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 basically... I love your fate with my two favorite episodes are A Good Man Goes to War. Good episode. And, and Angel will Take Manhattan. Good your episode. Your favorite performance. But the main question I want to ask you is about when you were in Legends of Tomorrow. Sure. When you were in Rip, when you were Rip Hunter. So I want to ask, what was your favorite like memory filming that? And also, would you have came back if they had like a final season? Like, would you have had the opportunity? So yeah, I'd love to do Legends of Tomorrow. I mean, it was it was a big old beast of a show i mean when i turned up so the studio that they had for it was about the size of this room with a much taller ceiling and on my first day i got there a few weeks earlier and they'd half built the wave rider in this studio in its entirety 
And they just took me in and went, right, here's your spaceship. And I was like, this is brilliant. Right, I get my own spaceship, that's, that's great. Um, and again, the people, like, I loved working with Victor Garber on that show. I loved working with everyone on that show. I mean, it was, some people were difficult in the nicest possible way. Uh, there were some big personalities uh, on that show. But like, Katie and Brandon and Victor were just, and Franz were, you know, just, just great to work with. I've been a big fan of Victor Garber for years, and so getting to work with him was, 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 was brilliant. And I got to ride a horse, and I love horses, so that was really fun. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was, really, it was really good fun. And yeah, so when I left, I, I left for various reasons, because uh, there were other jobs, that, filming jobs that I was doing, and then I wanted to come back and do some theatre. So I said to them, I was like, look, is, is it okay if I leave at some point? And they were great. They let me out of my contract, which was wonderful. And then it was always the plan to go back at some point, either for a few episodes or for a longer period of time. And we kept talking about it. And whenever they'd asked me to come back, I wasn't free. Um, and so, yeah, if it had have gone on for another season, I, I kind of hoped that I would have, you know, gone back. But I was very glad I, w I got to go back for the 100th episode and... Which was great, because Katie was directing it, and she was, it was great to see her at work. She's a really good director, so, yeah, it was good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, you mentioned Victor Garber. Yeah. You know what Victor Garber's in, don't you? What? Titanic. I know, Victor Garber is in Titanic, <laughs> which I can't watch. <laughs> we had a conversation backstage about my very huge obsession How with many Titan times have you seen it? Eleven times in the theater I saw Titanic. It's almost a four-hour movie, and your exact words were, it's so upsetting. Yeah, it I is. couldn't get through it. I was so... <laughs> Like just traumatized by it. It's so sad. It is. And, and, like all those people. Oh god, it was horrible. But yeah, Victor's in it. Victor's brilliant in it. There were thirteen watch. dogs on board too. Oh, yeah. Don't tell I'm me that. I'm making it so much worse. I'm so sorry. Yeah. We'll get back to the task at hand. Hello. <laughs> I would have let you just continue on, <laughs> but um, don't. Hiya. Hiya. Um, so I dropped off after Matt Smith because. I was a teenager and it was uncool to watch Doctor Who. Sure. Um, so I was re-watching uh, all of it. And um, what I like about Rory's character is that he's kind of rejects this like toxic masculinity. He's very, he's emotional. Yeah. He knows what, he, like he, he's around, surrounded by like strong women like Amy and, um, you know, River Song. Do you think that you got that from your own kind of experience with women or just... I know that's a very weird question, No, that's a really but... interesting question. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that without saying, yes, no, I am brilliant. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, think, I think the character was written like that and written like that for a, for, for a reason, because Stephen wanted to explore that and was, was really sick of, of seeing stories with like these big heroic men always kind of taking charge, and he really wanted to put... Um, Karen's character front and center in that um, in that relationship, uh, and I thought that was really I thought that was really good. But yeah, I suppose y y you know I I brought whatever of myself to it that that I could, and and I don't know. Like I know when I got the job, it w it was a fairly non the the dynamic wasn't quite set. Do you know what I mean? It was a fairly nondescript character and I definitely brought my nervousness and um, wanted to lean into that because I thought that was I don't know well two things I was very aware of the the the, the situations that I was presented with on the script for the audition. I was like, if anyone was in this situation, they would just be questioning everything and going, what, why are we doing this? Um, so I wanted to, to bring that, which I also thought would be funny. Um, and yeah, I liked the dynamic between them and, and the fact that, that Rory was emotional. And I suppose I am a very emotional person, so I, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't quite help that. But I'm going to continue thinking about that question. Yeah. So thank you. That's thank a very you. good Could, question. I, sorry to No, no, no please carry on. Um, I agree with you with the, the Pandorica and the Roman soldier. I was re-watching it, and it, it actually moved me. It's right. amazing about how much the show moves people. Yeah. Um, so I really did like that dynamic. So thank you. 
Oh, well, thank you very much. I no appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Great question. Cheers. We'll do our really final good. question here. This is perfect timing. Hi. Hi. Um, just want to say that I love you and Rory so much. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, I know that River's character was kept a secret for a while. Yeah. Uh, so when you read the script for the first time, was it like, what was your first initial reaction? Like, was it shock? And how did it affect like you with the cast? What, knowing that she was my daughter? Amy Roy's daughter. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert <laughs> for 12 years ago. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, we, were all, we knew that there was going to be a big twist yeah. and we knew that there was something like that coming. And so we all had a, we were all discussing it quite a lot, which is funny because we don't, you know, outside of work, you tend to kind of talk about lots of other things. You don't really talk about the job that you're doing. You know, we kind of talk about the, but we were all going, oh, God, there is something and we're going to work it out. And we knew that Alex knew and that she'd been told. And I say this a lot, and Karen, I think, keeps contradicting me on this, but I was the first one to work it out. Uh, and we were having dinner one day. Uh, I was sat next to Alex, and I, w I leant over to her. I was like, Alex, is the, is the thing that you've been told, is it that, that you know, that I'm, you're my daughter? And she just leaned over to me and went, hello, daddy. Uh, <laughs> And I was like, yes, that's the best way I could have possibly found that out. That's uh, very good. Um, so, yeah, we were all just really excited because we knew it was such a good storyline. And it was so Stephen Moffat. It, it was just like a perfect thing. And we knew that, you know, whatever he'd have written, it would have been amazing. But, yeah, op and op opening any script on Doctor Who when you're working on it is such an exciting moment because it's like reading a book that you're in. And you get, you know, whenever the scripts came out, we'd all just hurry them away and, and, and go through them. It was always, especially a Stephen script. So um, that one did not disappoint. It was, uh, yeah, it was very, very exciting. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you much. so much. Amazing questions, everybody. Yeah, really Thank good you questions. So Thank much. you so much. And Arthur, this has been so much fun to hear oh. all of your insight. You are fascinating. And Thank just you. congratulations on the career. Wishing you continued success, Thank of course. Thank you very much. Any final words for your adoring fans oh, here in Manchester? Oh, no, but thank you. It's so nice to see so many of you. And I've met so many of you so far. And I'll be over there if you want to come and say hello. So thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for Arthur Darville.